It's Friday, November 16. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has again signaled the government's intention to reform the public sector into a more efficient system. Speaking at the National Competitiveness Council meeting yesterday, the Prime Minister reiterated a three-plank macro policy to turn around the country. He cited fiscal reformation and regulatory reformation, with the third plank being the reformation in the ease of doing business or efficiency. To that end, he said the public sector plays a crucial role in fostering an environment that makes economic growth possible. The public sector in its present form is not there to serve itself. The public sector is there to serve the private sector. The growth and development of the economy does not come from the public sector. It is the private sector that is the engine of growth. Our job is to create the environment in which that engine can work at the optimum. Ultimately, the public sector is going to come to the realization that the improvements in your salaries and your conditions of work depend on how well the private sector performs and increase its tax payment and the tax base. These are uncomfortable truths, but they are truths. The Prime Minister pointed out that reforms have taken place within the public sector, but there were little to no results due to lack of implementation processes. By way of an example, he cited the Application Management and Data Automation System, Amanda. The Amanda system is a web-based application management system which is aimed at providing greater transparency in the approval process at the local government level. Prime Minister Holness appealed to mayors and local government representatives to lead the reform process in local authorities. Lean forward in the Amanda system. Let's start embracing it and letting it work. Otherwise, I will really have to sit down now and figure out how do I um, enforce this. Um, and it can be done. It can be done. Legislation can change. Authority can be moved. We can pass a new act in Parliament, set up a new agency, and the existing agencies that had the power and the authority could become redundant. And these are things that governments have to consider, as uncomfortable as they sound and as unseemly as they may be in the national interest. Jamaica has slipped from 70th to 75th in the latest Doing Business report that surveyed 190 countries. Officials say the slippage is largely because of the progress of other countries and maintained that Jamaica has been making strides in creating an environment conducive to local and international investments. However, important fixes are needed in the areas to access of credit and electricity. Speaking at the National Competitiveness Council meeting at the office of the Prime Minister Thursday, Jampo President Diane Edwards outlined factors that would make the country more competitive. We fell five spots in the ranking but gained 0.55 in the score. So that is critical because once again, as I keep saying, we need to run to keep up and sometimes we have to run to stay still in the rankings, to maintain our position in the rankings. In starting a business, we slipped one point, but that's really not bad. We are at really the highest point in, in that scale. We're in the top 10 where we want to be at number six. We should note that in dealing with construction permits, we improved 22 points, as Minister Vaz outlined. And that is, again, critical because construction permits, as we know, can unleash a whole series of investments in the construction industry, which create jobs very fast. And we have in the pipeline at Jampro a strong pipeline of investment projects in the construction area that need to improve and to accelerate their process through the system. She said policies are being fast-tracked to ensure that the environment better favors investors. We have reduced it to manageable um, 20 reforms that, 
global reforms that we need to undertake. And this we want to do by 2020. It's a big chunk of reform, but we can do it because it's really about knowing what we need to do and being deliberate about it. And we are very deliberate about it. And we have started discussions with implementing agencies and we have actually targeted the reforms that we need to implement to get us there. So this is not a pipe dream. More National Water Commission supply systems are being affected by the, what the entity says are abnormally dry conditions. In a news release Thursday, the NWC said the dry spill in sections of Portland, St. Mary and St. Anne is affecting its ability to serve several communities in the parishes. This has forced the shutdown of Norwich Pump Station and a turtle crawl facility in Portland. In their interim, the affected communities are being served on a scheduled basis. And the National Works Agency is reporting that upgraded work on Mandela Highway, which spans St. Andrew and St. Catherine, is 89% complete. The U.S. $64 million Mandela Highway realignment and reconstruction project involves road construction works comprising extensive soft oil treatment construction of 3.5 kilometers six-lane corridor with a two-lane overpass bridge, two new three-lane bridges at Freshwater, and a two-lane service road adjacent to the main roadway to facilitate the development of Caymanus Estate and upgrading of the six miles interchange. Senior Communications and Customer Services Officer at the National Works Agency, Ramona Lawson, says a significant portion of the work has been completed so far. The Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, has provided loans in the sum of 100 million U.S. dollars to assist Jamaica in its fight against non-communicable diseases, NCDs. The government says that the funding from the IDB will strengthen health policies that target NCD risk factors and treatment. These policies include providing higher quality care and improving access to public health networks with an emphasis on chronic disease management. Jamaica's NCD prevention policy seeks to address two main challenges. The first is prevention of NCDs by addressing four preventable risk factors. Tobacco use, excessive alcohol consumption, a sedentary lifestyle, and unhealthy dietary habits. The second is improving the quality of life and care for people living with NCDs. It involves preventing premature NCD-related deaths. The issue of people having sex with persons under 16 years old continues to be a challenge. That's the word from Superintendent and Head of Constabulary's Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse Sissoka, Charmaine Shand. She says at least eight cases of sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 are reported in the parishes of Kingston and St. Andrew daily. The superintendent said, too, that the offense, which is a breach of the Sexual Offenses Act, is usually reported after the teenager has been impregnated. Superintendent Shand made the revelation at the University of the West Indies UNESCO Philosophy Day at the University of the West Indies in Kingston yesterday. Shand is quoted saying, up to October 31, 2018, Sissoka appreciated 1,700 reports of sexual offenses and child abuse, and these are against children. There is another figure that includes adults, with Kingston and St. Andrew accounting for over 800. End quote. Just over 200 representatives of the Jamaica diaspora in the United States of America will converge on the town of Maro, Georgia for the inaugural three-day Diaspora Leadership Summit from November 16 to 18. The event, which has as its theme, Making Our Voices Matter Through Leadership, will focus on the development of the diaspora's USA-based leadership 
and strengthening its contribution to Jamaica. The summit will open today with a welcome reception, which will be addressed by the Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Colonel Charles Jr., Ambassador to the United States, Audrey Marks, and Mayor of Maro, Georgia, Jeffrey Dattar. Other organizers of the summit are Diaspora Advisory Board representative from the USA Midwest, Dr. Rupert Francis, and Achille Lawrence Maitland, representing the Northeast. In regional news, the University of Havana is celebrating its victory at a university programming contest held at the University of Science and Technology recently. The contest also took place in Santo Domingo. The competition highlighted practical resolutions to technical and social issues in their society. Richard Richards explains. The University of Havana won the trophy at the final Caribbean International University Programming Contest in its 10th edition, which concluded this weekend in the Cuban University of Information, Science and Technology and in its other venue in the Republic of Santo Domingo. 43 centers of advanced studies of the Caribbean region disputed the rights to participate in the World Cup of the University's programming contest, which will take place next year in Oporto, Portugal, from the 31st of March to the 5th of April. Every one of these balloons represents a problem solved by the competitors. The Cubans resolved 9 of 13 tasks of different complexities which required mathematic abilities, control of computational algorithms, handling of English, extreme concentration and teamwork. One of the team winners responding to the television information system said, Gaining the trophy on the rise to go to the superior level in Portugal 2019 was just due to the experience in other contents of this type and the teamwork of all three, of course. So it was easier for us to follow the necessary strategies in solving the problems at hand. So we have done just what we do daily as to achieve the best possible results. And that is it. Now, these university young professionals are continuing their preparation for the great contest in Europe. They got hold of the first place in the Caribbean area and third of all Latin America that was headed by Brazil, who held the first and second position in this region. Latin America was present in the tournament with 406 teams. Meanwhile, 43 universities of the Caribbean took part in the regional ending of the International University Programming Contest 2018, sponsored by the Association for Computing Machinery. Direct from Cuba, Richards Richards, Canal Caribe. In sports, we're on the pitch with Tevin Rochester, Jamaica's hat-trick hero in their 7-1 win over Aruba at the CONCACAF Under-20 Championship in Florida on Thursday night. He says the team has not given up hope despite their now slim hopes of advancing to the qualification stage of the tournament. Rochester scored twice from the penalty spot with goals in the 52nd minute and 66th minute and time added. Jamai Topi, Mr. Daly, Ricardo McIntosh were the other scorers. But although winning, the young Jamaicans stayed second in the group on 10 points. Same as leaders in Mexico who beat Grenada 8-0 to stay ahead with a superior goal difference. The young reggae boys will face St. Martin in their final preliminary round match on Saturday, while Mexico will play Aruba. And that's the news. Thanks so much for watching PBCJ. Remember, we are the People's Station.